Hey, this is Adam. In this video, I want to share with you some free tools you can use to create screen capture videos. So that would be like tutorial videos or demonstrations you want to do on your screen that you want to share with people and record. So the first tool I'm going to share with you is called Jing. And I actually don't use this tool for video, but I wanted to share it with you because it's really powerful. And I'm going to just kind of talk to you about how I do incorporate it into what I do. So, um, you want to go to techsmith.com. Techsmith is the vendor, and they actually have a full product suite here. I'm going to focus on free tools today. In other videos, I'll talk about some other paid tools that I use that are really good, but I want to get you guys started just producing regardless of what your budget is. So go to techsmith.com and download Jing, okay? Once you download and install it, you'll see this little yellow thing here at the top. It looks like a sun when you when you move it around. You can drag it around, but the first functionality I'm going to show you is the functionality I use a lot um, when it comes to Jing. So you just mouse over it and then you click on this little, uh, like it looks like a little target. Um, and once you do that, then you just basically select the amount of screen you want to capture. Now if it's an image, you might only want to capture some small part of the screen. Right? So if you were going to do a video, obviously you'd want to capture as much of the screen that you want to record. But let's say you just have a little part of the screen you want to capture in an image. This is so powerful, you're gonna love this. So you, you just drag it out and then down here, you just click on the little capture image button, okay? Now this is in the case where you wanna do an image. So you just click on this button and then it takes you into this editor that's really awesome. So let's say I wanted to like make a part of this image stand out. There's a few things you can do. Number one, you can add an arrow. So let's say there was just some, some more context I wanted to add to like a part of the image. I'd add an arrow there and then I could put a little text box here Oops, so the little T here is the text box. Just click on it and you say, this is what I want you to see. Boom. And so now I've got this arrow, you know, pointing to a part of the image that I want to stand out. And, and now, I mean, you can obviously see how this adds to the, to the, old, the, the effect of the image. Um, you could also add highlighting. So if you click on this button here, you could like highlight text that you want to stand out. That's another way to do it. And you can also add a border. Um, so if you wanted to like frame a certain part of the image, you can do that. I mean, this is super powerful stuff. So after you do that, um, you click on save and then you can just save it and use the image wherever you want to use it. Um, so I'm not gonna save this because this was just for demonstration. But the other cool thing is when you mouse over this, if you click on this middle button here that says history, It'll share. It'll show you your, your full, um, you know, all the images and videos you've created that you can access at any time. Okay, so now I'm going to just show you the Im or the video capability too. So to do a video capture, you just mouse over it and then you click on capture again. And this time, obviously, in most cases, if you're doing video, you're going to want to capture most of the screen. So you you drag it out and then it'll create. Again, you'll see this little menu down here, and you just want to go to the second button this time that looks like a little reel. That's capture video. So you just click on that. Then it counts down. Now, I want to talk right away about the limitations of Jing video. And number one, you're limited to five minutes. You can see that here. You can't go over five minutes with the video. So if you're going to do short tutorials, it's fine. But the, the, the bigger limitation in my eyes is the fact that once you get done with the video, so I'm just going to stop this. Um, once you get done with the videos, there's you only have two options for how you can you know what you can do with the video and one of them is not a seamless way to upload it to YouTube which is obviously where you want your video to be right you can save the video locally as what's what's called an SWF file but SWF files are not a good format they're not a true video format and YouTube can't won't accept them it's not a it's not a format that's compatible with YouTube so you actually have to do a conversion to it to get it up to YouTube which is a pain in the butt. I've, I've tried using some freeware in the past that, I mean, I ended up getting a virus on my computer and so I, I strongly suggest you don't use Jing for video if your intention is to get the video up to YouTube. I'm gonna show you a different tool for that. But if you have videos that you wanna create, let's say it's a suite of videos that you wanna just keep private or um, give access to your team and that sort of thing, you do have a hosting option called Screencast and that's this little button down here. So after you record the video down here, you'll see this little, there's like three arrow, arrows there and it's it's share via screencast.com. You can set up a free screencast.com screencast account. 
um, that gives you like two gigabytes of storage. Obviously, that's limiting, but um, that is a way to start getting your videos hosted if you do want to use Jing for that. I don't personally because I, again, I want I want to use a tool that has seamless integration with YouTube. So I just wanted to share this with you so you know of a way you can you can create. Um, you know, short videos with Jing. I mean, it's a lot, this is a lot of functionality that Jing gives you, so I'm certainly not complaining. I'm just kind of trying to give you the limitations as well as the benefits. I, I definitely use Jing a lot for images, like to create those image captures and add some context to them, but I don't use it for video, I, but I did want to share this with you. Um, now, if you use Jing to create videos and you actually do purchase Camtasia, like I have Camtasia, it does seamlessly enable you to import your video into Camtasia to do further editing. So if you do buy, you know, if you do ever pick up Camtasia Studio, then this would be a way for you to get a video into Camtasia, do further editing, and then through Camtasia, through the Camtasia product, you can upload your video seamlessly to YouTube. Um, and I, I mean, I'm a big proponent of Camtasia. It's an awesome suite, but it's for it's you know, it's something you should look at when you know you're really serious about video and you want to dive further into it. In the beginning, I'm going to show you an, another tool that will enable you to do the screen longer screen capture videos and enable you to get it easily up to YouTube. So I'll show you that tool now. It's called Screencast-O-Matic. I'll have a link to it, but you can get there by just going to Screencast-O-Matic. You can see there's dashes in it, but you can also get there without the dashes. And once you're there, you have two options. You can just start recording um, just through the website. Like the website will actually launch an app that will um, start the recording. Or you can download their um, desktop version, which is also free. That's the link right here. So I, I don't use this because, like I said, I have other software that I use, but I, this is an awesome tool for those of you who don't have a budget and don't want to buy any video marketing software, you know, video screen recording software, then I highly recommend Screencast-O-Matic because, A, there is not a limit as much of a limitation on time. You can create videos up to 15 minutes long for free, and, B, you can seamlessly upload them to YouTube. So I'll show you how this works. Just click on Start Recording. And then you might get prompted because it uses Java to uh, do this. And actually, I already have one um, that I that I haven't done anything with, so I'll delete it and then I'll do this again. Okay, so after after you you know click start recording and just go through those prompts, you'll see this like rectangle thing, right? That's again, it's just the the box that you have to drag to cover the amount of the screen you want to record, right? So after you do that, then in the bottom again, you'll see this these buttons okay so you can just click on this little red uh, circle that's the record button and then it'll count down and then you're recording and, and you know just another thing to make you aware of when you're doing these types of tutorials you'll commonly run into situations where you want to transition from maybe one thing to another and so that would maybe be a case where you'd want to pause the video just click on the pause and then you can like go to a new site for example if you wanted to sh show something on another site just go go to the new site and then you can you can resume the recording by just clicking on the red button again and it'll just continue where you left off after it counts down so then I'm now I'm recording again okay and then when I'm done I just click on done and after that point the cool thing is that you have multiple options one is to um, publish your video to screencastomatic.com, which you can certainly do. It's just another place your video will be hosted, but obviously you also want to get it on YouTube. So you do that. The other cool thing is one thing I definitely suggest you do is make sure you publish it to a video file and just save it. Okay, so to do that, you just click on publish to video file and then you click on um, save video and then just save it in some um, it'll save it in an mp4 format which is a YouTube friendly format is it's a standard video format so you just click on save okay and then it'll save it and actually I'm just gonna pause this video while it okay so now that it's saved you know I have it you know on my local machine and I'm gonna tell you something guys so then after you do that you can just go back and publish it to YouTube the reason you should save it locally is because in addition to getting your videos on YouTube, you want to have your own copy of them because YouTube has been known to shut down accounts for reasons that in some cases are, are, are difficult to explain. I've actually had one of my YouTube accounts shut down 
and I lost some videos and I learned a lesson <laughs> from that. You want to save all your videos. Um, have a local copy of them. So always publish to publish to video file first and just save them locally in a in a folder and then publish them to YouTube. Just click on the button, add in your title description, tags, and category and publish. You're good to go. Um, you just go click on upload to YouTube. So hopefully you guys have gotten a lot of value from this. These are two really powerful tools. Like I said, I use Jing mostly for images that I want to add some context to for demonstration purposes. And I use, uh, I actually don't use Screencast-O-Matic because I use other software, paid software for my video editing that just enables me to do some more robust editing. And I'll share that stuff with you uh, later. But um, if you're on a limited budget, Screencast-O-Matic is super powerful. So I definitely recommend it for you. So hopefully you got a lot of uh, value from th this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment and tell me what you liked. And I'll see you on the next video.